Welcome to Christina's Craft Catch-Up. So, to start off with, I thought I'd tell you a bit about me, since we've never met before. I am Christina. I live in Australia, as you can tell by my accent and by the fact that I'm wearing a big woolly jumper. So, to start with, I like to sew. I I'm actually doing a course at the local TAFE about sewing industrially and uh, that's really fun. I, I've met a lot of friends through that and it's awesome. I also like to knit and I do a bunch of other crafts as well. So I've done some crochet, I've done some needle felting. Now let's show you the things I've made in the past week. Well the first thing is this jumper which is pretty, pretty good, right? This is made of Bendigo Woolen Mills Luxury 10 Ply Wool, 100% wool. And I, I use this wool for a lot of stuff. And the pattern is the Shill Shoal Hoodie, I think I'm saying that right, by Andrea Rangel. And I bought it and downloaded it from Ravelry, which is the best knitting website ever. And I use it all the time, so I'll put my Ravelry page in the description bar so you can friend me. Um, yeah, so about this pattern, I changed it a fair bit. I made all of the garter stitch sections rib because I don't like garter stitch, I think it looks kind of unfinished. So I made them all rib. I also changed the color pattern. This was supposed to be little boxes, I made it a stripe. Let me think, I also changed the arms quite a bit because, uh, well firstly they were supposed to be knitted in the round, but that drives me insane. I hate doing that. So I made it just knit flat and then I seamed it. I also made them shorter because I think the pattern is made for some kind of gorilla person with huge long arms. I think I have normal sized arms, but maybe not. Uh, let me think, I changed this, this colour work a little bit mainly because I made some mistakes and then had to go with it. It's a hoodie, as you can see. It's got this very pointy hood, which makes me look a bit like a pixie. So that's kind of cute, in a way. Um, looks a little bit funny, but I'm only going to wear it when it's really cold or raining or something. So I really love this. It's already getting a bit pilly, which is pretty annoying seeing as how I made it a week ago. So I'm thinking I might change to a different kind of wool for my next projects once I've used up all my luxury 10 ply because it's just kind of disheartening to put all this work into stuff and then have it pill on you. Okay, what else have I been working on this week? Okay, you're gonna think I'm crazy. But that's okay, I am. I'm a massive nerd. So my friend lent me this pattern the Comox Trunks, and this is a men, men's underwear pattern uh, by Thread Theory. So, and I made him a size 32 pair of these underpants, and they were massive on him. So, if you use this pattern, go down a couple sizes. So, I went down to the 28, made him a pair of underpants, and they fit perfectly. There they are. I made a little change, as you can see in this one. It has a little hole in the front, a little wee-wee hole. Yeah, I took that out. So, I just made it normal at the front. No wee-wee hole. And it's really good. He loves it a lot. So I've been making my own underwear for a, a long time now. Maybe a year or more. And I use a Knitwit pattern. So Knitwit was a pattern company back in the 70s, 80s and 90s. And I don't think they exist anymore but they did patterns for knit fabrics, knit wit, knit fabrics, so everything was stretchy. I made myself a pair of matching underpants, so my husband and I have matching underpants. So if you don't think we're crazy, you will when you see that I have made us two more sets of matching underpants. Now that's good for Charles. And then the last pair, this fabric I bought at an op shop, and it works, it's just like t-shirt fabric, probably cotton, elastine sort of fabric. So, there's our three pairs of matching underpants. 
So if you want to make some of these underpants yourself, you can download the pattern from my blog. I've put it up there and uh, I've also got detailed instructions on how to do it. They're very, very comfy, these underpants. I have about six pairs now myself. I made my mum some for Christmas and then she dropped hints until I made her some more for Mother's Day. So they're very, very comfy. Do recommend. So that's what I've made this week. Now let's talk about what I am in the process of making this week. So, thing, thing number one is this cardigan I'm making. Also Bendigo Woolen Mills Luxury 10 Ply. This is the Marion Cardigan by Andy Satterland. And uh, it's a V-neck cardigan. As you can see, I've gone down to where the back and the front join and now I have to knit downwards until it's the right length. Then add sleeves and a neck band. And I'm doing this uh, in conjunction with my friend Violet, who lives in Melbourne. She's also knitting herself a pink cardigan, uh, the same one. And so I hope when I go to Melbourne next week, we can be twinsies and it will be the cutest thing in the world. I bought this pattern off Ravelry as well and you can find my Ravelry page down below. So that's that. Now with this wool, it was a lot brighter than I thought it was going to be. I got it in the swatch card and I thought this was going to be a lovely light sort of coral colour and it turned out to be highlighter pink. So I will stop traffic in this. I'm going to wear it anyway because I made it. But uh, yeah, kind of bright. Violets is not so bright. <laughs> also pink, but not so bright. So that's one thing I'm working on. The other thing is I'm working on a blouse. I've made this blouse pattern before in a different fabric, but um, it's New Look 6107 and it's got a neck tie and rouleau loops for the buttonholes and uh, I'm making it with cap sleeves. So this is my fabric. There we are. So you can sort of see that it's turning into a blouse. Of course it hasn't got sleeves or a collar yet. Um, I started this yesterday. It's really difficult fabric. It warps all over the place. It, uh, it's sort of slippery, but it doesn't fray and it feels nice, so it'll be nice when it's finished. It does press well as, as well, which is uh, handy when you make, when you sew things. Another useful thing is that it has these lines through it. I don't know if you can see, but it has lines through it, which means that I can sort of follow those lines when I'm lining up the straight grain. So this is actually a toile, because I'm going to make another one. It's going to be a wearable toile, uh, but yeah, it's a practice, basically. So that's what I'm working on at the moment. So let's think about what I'm going to make in the coming week. Now, I mentioned that was a toile. It's a toile because I'm going to make that blouse out of this lovely silk fabric. It's not a slippery silk, but definitely silk. I bought this at a second-hand market. And uh, the only thing is I'm worried that it won't go with my skin tone because I'm kind of peachy and this is also kind of peachy. That's what I'm going to make next. Since I'm going to Melbourne, I'm, I've got this big list of things I want to make before I go. So I need to finish this, finish this, make this. And I also want to make a lady skater dress. This is uh, a pattern by Kitchi Koo patterns and the lady skater dress is basically a stretch dress with a scoop neck neck and a sort of flared skirt. You can either make it with cap sleeves, three quarter length or full length sleeves. I've made myself three of them and they're just really good so I've got some navy fabric I'm going to make one of them out of. That's everything I think so thank you for watching Christina's Craft Catch Up and I'll see you in a week. Bye! Da 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 da